remake things. We use our hands, minds, and machines to build, to fix, to improve. We're known as do-it-yourselfers, home improvement fans, fix-it fanatics, inventors. At our core, though, we're all makers. So let's jump in and make something. Hi, I'm Ron Hazelton. Welcome to the show. Now today, I'm going to take on both the floor and the ceiling. Here at our place, my wife just can't stand the ceramic tile floor in our kitchen. So we're replacing it with hardwood. Now it turns out, putting the new floor down is easy. And <laughs> getting the old one out, well, that's another story. Now, once I'm done crawling around here, my hands and knees, I'm heading over to a friend's home to help him remove the popcorn ceiling in his dining room. So stick around and watch. I promise not to put you to work. Now this item on my honey-do list is long overdue, and my wife Lynn isn't going to stand for one more day on the ceramic tile on our kitchen floors. As for me, I really don't mind it so much, and I'm not crazy about what she's got in mind for a replacement. Honey, what are you doing? I'm cleaning up juice, some of the accidentally spilled. No, oh, Ron. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. because this floor get gets it. so get it. slippery. Get it. Honestly, we've got to replace this floor. It's not horrible, but I think a wood floor would look so much better. But wood in the kitchen, I don't like it because it doesn't hold up well to pets, children, and water, all three of which we've really? got here. Right. The floors that they have now are really great for kitchens. Look, why don't I do this? Um, you go investigate, I'll get some information. If in fact we find that there's a wood floor that would be appropriate for a kitchen and our kind of use, great. If not, we'll carpet. <laughs> Dura Luster Plus Urethane, 25 year finish. Uh -huh. Lifetime, Lifetime structural, structural warranty. warranty. The manufacturer warrants that the finish will not wear through or separate from the wood for 25 full years. Well, let's do it. You got your wood floor. Bye bye tile. Well, now we're going to begin the serious work on this job. We're going to try to get this old tile up. And I say try because, uh, well, I'm sure I'm going to get it up. I'm just not sure how much work it's going to be. going. Well, it's time for plan B. That's certainly not going to work to chip this up. So here's what I'm going to try next. I'm going to take a saw with a diamond tip blade and I'm going to cut through the grout lines between the tile because what I discovered over there is the tile is glued on top of a sheet of eighth inch Luan plywood. And if I can cut this into sections, I think I can get up underneath that plywood and actually pry this off in large hunks. The only problem with this method is that it's going to generate a lot of dust, so I've really got to seal up this room, start taping doors up like this one. So I've taken a couple of other dust precautions. Got my dust mask on here. Got a fan over here in the window that's going to pull some of this dust out. I've attached a vacuum to my circular saw right here. Now the blade I have on my circular saw is a diamond tip blade designed specifically for cutting through stone and masonry. It should have no trouble getting through this grout. Underneath all that tile, 30-year-old vintage vinyl in surprisingly good shape. Wow. Okay. This is solid oak. Uh, it's almost an exact match for what we have in the house. The difference, of course, is the thickness. 
Sure. Th this new flooring is only 5 16 of an inch, this one 3 quarters. In our case, in remodeling the kitchen, the thinner floor actually turns out better because it doesn't raise the floor up as much. The transitions into the other room are going to be a lot better. Excellent. The spaces underneath the countertop, like for the dishwasher, they're not going to be made that much smaller. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, I think actually uh, this is actually going to be an advantage right here. Fabulous. I think it's gorgeous. Well, I've got Lynn's approval, so it's time to get started. And just to make sure I do it right, I've asked for a little help. Hey, buddy. Hey, Rob. Come on in. Good. Glad you're here. Thanks for giving me a hand with this. Sure. Um, wood's here. Good. How long has the wood been in the house? Uh, well, you told me to bring it in like three or four days ahead, which I did. John Klepp Edge is a technical consultant for Armstrong Flooring. He explains that the new flooring needs time to acclimate to its surroundings. That means it should have about the same moisture content as the surface it's being installed over. Just to be sure, he checks both with an electronic moisture meter. So the moisture is good. The flooring and the old floor are close enough, right? All right. So where do you start in a room like this? What part of the room do you begin in? We would normally start on the exterior wall. Why? Because the exterior wall is the straightest. Okay, that makes sense. Am I going to work? Yep, I'm ready. Let's do it. To begin, we snap a chalk line about three inches from the wall. This gives us a perfectly straight reference for our first row. The half inch gap left between the floor and the wall will give the flooring room for expansion as humidity changes. First board's in place. Now we can just go ahead and continue this line down through here? Yes. So these ends actually then interlock. Right, they engage. Engage, um, that's, a, that's a good word. So that's our second strip right there, right? And then we're going to need to mark around that pipe so that we can cut that out. I use a combination square to transfer the pipe location to the board, then cut out the notch with a jigsaw. I cut a strip of flooring to finish out the first row and nail it in place. On the second row, an air conditioning vent is the challenge. I mark the location on a piece of flooring and again use the jigsaw to cut out the shape. Then, more nailing. Now, while this flooring could be glued down if we were working on concrete, because we've got a plywood subfloor here, we're stapling this in using this special staple gun. It has a base or a foot on here that holds the gun at precisely the right angle, about 45 degrees. It's driving that staple through at the base of the tongue. Let me show you here. See, and it's the angle of the staple as well as the staple itself that's actually holding this flooring in so well. And then, when we assemble the next one, the groove just covers that staple completely and disappears. Now what that means is, like three-quarter inch solid flooring, you have no visible fasteners on the surface. They're all hidden in the joinery. Several boxes of flooring are dumped out and scrambled together so the grain patterns and colors will be intermixed, like shuffling a deck of cards. With the basics under my belt, I get to work in earnest. Well, my industriousness and attention to detail are paying off. The new floor is beginning to take shape. The pace is quickening now. I am really in the groove. Yep, I'm getting somewhere all right. Well, well, it's been hard work, but I definitely have made some progress here. Right now, though, I'm running into a little bit of a situation. You see, I'm coming up onto this door casing right here. And while it would be possible to cut this around the casing, it wouldn't be a very neat job, and it's a lot of extra work. So instead, I'm going to do something called undercutting. And that involves taking a couple of scrap pieces of material, like this, and actually making a saw cut right around here. You here to put in the floor? Well, what is this? More flooring? Uh, I'm sorry, I speak a little English. A little English? Oh, it's not flooring at all. It's lunch. 
Okay, great. Thank you very much. Now a guy can't toil on an empty stomach. Well, it's back to work. Well, that's a long job. I'm getting there though, just a little bit more to go. The final touch, installing strips of quarter round molding around the edges to conceal that expansion gap. Well, take a look, not a bad day's work, huh? Oh my God, you're doing the dishes? Can you believe it, huh? I'll do anything to be in this room now. I love these floors. I know, it look, they look so good. Looks better than I even imagined, really. You're right. I give you credit. Wow. And not only do they look great, they're tough. They're tough? Uh -huh. They're tough they're enough durable. for a dance. What do you say? Oh my God. Remember the old days? Huh? Remember, oh, our, yeah. remember the, the wedding? Here we go, ready? Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> 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 I think I'm putting Kyle back. <laughs> God. Okay, God. I'm going upstairs now. One dance? In this week's sweepstakes, we're giving away a Ryobi four-piece lithium-ion compact combo power tool kit. It includes a circular saw, a work light, cordless drill and charger, and reciprocating saw, all in a rugged carrying case. Now these tools are powerful, yet compact, lightweight, and easy to handle. The lithium-ion batteries hold a charge 40% longer. To enter the sweepstakes, just go to ronhazelton.com and click on the sweepstakes banner. Now my friend Teen Osborne, no relation to Ozzy, is looking to get rid of the popcorn ceiling that clashes with his Casa's Spanish style. Now truth is, I do prefer my popcorn at the movies and not on the ceiling, so I'm going to show him how to remove it. It's really a lot easier than you may think. As you can see, the ceiling needs some work. Oh yeah? Yeah, this is not part of the 1930s design, is it? No, I think the original owners did some work in the 80s. All right, well, you know what? Uh, it's not that difficult to take this down. It's a little bit messy. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll do a lot of preparation work here just to protect the walls and the floors. Uh, first thing, though, let's get the furniture out of here. Okay. I'll be, I'll be the chair. With the power off, team takes down the light fixture from the ceiling. Oh, that was pretty easy, Ron. Okay. Well, first electrical job in the new place. Next, we're going to cover the walls and floor with layers of heavy-duty plastic. This is just a little added insurance here for the receptacles, even though we've turned the power off. So let's go ahead and... We tape small pieces of plastic over each outlet. Next, we extend the plastic floor sheeting up the walls, a foot or so, and tape the edge. This will keep any water from getting under the baseboards. So all that water is going to be dripping? It will come right down here, yeah. Oh. Okay, that kind of makes me nervous, Ron. Right. Well, it should. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we run a strip of painter's tape along the upper edge of the walls, about a quarter of an inch below the ceiling. This will give us a good seal at the top. Then we cover the entire wall with plastic, taping the top edge to the strip of tape we just put up. Finally, we roll out a layer of rosin paper. Now this will absorb a lot of the water that falls from the ceiling, help prevent the floor from getting slippery, reduce the possibility of tracking debris into other parts of the house, and make cleanup a lot easier. Some blown on acoustical ceilings applied before the early 70s contain asbestos, and they should be removed only by a certified asbestos removal contractor. Now you can find out if your ceiling contains asbestos by taking a small sample and then send it off to an EPA certified testing lab before you begin your removal project. Okay, team, now for the fun part. This is just a garden sprayer, plain water in here. Okay. We're going to start applying this to the ceiling. Probably want to work in an area about four to five feet square at a time. It's probably better to make several passes and kind of let it soak it up as you go. The acoustic material on a ceiling like this can absorb a lot of water. The trick is to wet it thoroughly, but not over-wet it. Too much water can damage the paper surface of the wallboard underneath. Now this is what we're going to use to scrape this material off the ceiling. It's a joint knife. You can think of it as kind of a wide putty knife. So what I was doing a moment ago was rounding off the corners right here. That will prevent us from gouging the ceiling, something we'd have to repair later on. 
Now the water has done most of the work. This popcorn ceiling is just about falling off by itself. If we run into any hard scraping, we'll stop, apply a little more water, wait, and then try again. Before team gets too far, we take a little break and unroll a second layer of rosin paper right on top of the ceiling debris. Presto, we've got a nearly clean floor surface again. In less than an hour, team is removing the final remnants of his old popcorn ceiling. With the dirty work done, we take down the plastic sheeting from the walls and roll up the wet paper and plastic on the floor. The mess from the old ceiling gets wrapped up inside and the whole thing goes into a large garbage bag. Now the same water that so easily removed the acoustic coating has also loosened the paper joint tape. So now we've got a bare joint right here and we're going to have to recover that. So step one, this is joint compound right here. Mix it up uh, in a tray. And I'm going to put this on a, using about a six inch knife. First, we lay down a thin layer of joint compound along the joint line. Next, I dip the joint tape in a bucket of water and squeeze off the excess between my fingers. I find that the wet tape Wetting the tape makes it stick to the joint compound better and reduces the likelihood of air bubbles. Team uses a putty knife to press the tape into the joint compound and smooth off the excess. Same water that caused our tape to come loose has kind of eroded these uh, nail holes. This is joint compound that was put on to cover up the depressions from the nail holes or screw oh. holes, whatever they used here. Sure. So we're going to have to bring those back up uh, flush with the uh, wallboard. We use Again, the I joint compound sparingly, the... just enough to fill the holes. It's faster to make two thin applications than overfilling and having to do a lot of extra sanding later. A little steeper. That's pretty good. While our joint compound is dry, now we're going to do a little sanding, but we're not going to use sandpaper. We're going to use instead a sanding mesh like this right here. Now this is designed to go on a sanding pad, and this particular sanding pad is on the end of a long pole so that we don't have to go back up on the ladder. Team, all set. You're all ready to go here. Just hold this up on the ceiling. The secret here is to sand off high ridges. Low spots will be filled with another coat of joint compound. Well, the popcorn's gone. Yeah. Got a little bit of stuff on us in the process, yeah. but we're not but too it's bad. It's not here. too bad. You got a couple things left to do. Uh, yeah. You're probably going to want to put on eh, maybe one, maybe two skim coats just to fill up any low spots with a light sanding in between. And then prime this. And uh, okay. be sure to choose a primer that uh, says four wall board. Okay. Um, and then you have, you can leave it. You can put a final coat of paint on, or you can texture it to match your walls right here, whatever. Mm -hmm. It would be your choice at this point. Okay. Anyway, the first probably of many uh, home improvement projects here yeah. in this house, huh? I, I'm energized. I have confidence now. Well, I say leave the popcorn for the movies. A smooth ceiling is the first step in making Team's vision for his dream house a reality. You know, most folks think their garage door opener is working properly if they push the button and the door goes up and down. But there's one more important factor. Garage door openers are equipped with a safety feature that stops the door and reverses it when it encounters resistance, like a child or a pet. Now, here's a simple test you can make to be sure that your door is adjusted properly. Start the door down, put an unopened roll of paper towels underneath it. The bottom of the door should contact the paper towels, compress it slightly, stop, and then reverse. If it doesn't, your door needs to be adjusted. You can do that yourself by checking your owner's manual or call a professional.